Hello boys and girls, how are we all doing? I haven't seen you in a little while now, but I'm sure you've all been busy at home doing all the nice things with mommy and daddy and all your little brothers and sisters. So, what do we do first? We know now, don't we? Yes, we do. Washy washy, happy happy, because things are opening, aren't they? And we're going to get back to normal in no time and we'll be out and about, but we have to be washy washy, happy happy. So, I'm with you today for Crinion and Oak. So we're going to do some stories now. Are we ready? Okay, let's see, what's the first one? <gasps> Bunny and Bee's Noisy Night. And this is by Sam Williams. <gasps> I like the little outfits. Here is a house, a house in a tree. Ooh, that's cool, isn't it? <gasps> the house is the home of Bunny and Bee. This is Bunny and this is Bee. Each night before they rest their heads, they hug good night and climb into their beds. They look nice and cosy. The night is quiet. Oh, shh. Not a sound to be heard. Not an owl, a fox or badger, nor a cat or a bird. Very quiet. But then, ooh, 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 ooh. owl to bunny and bee. Good night, Owl, calls Bunny. Good night, Owl, calls Bee. Wop, 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 back, back. Fox to Bunny and Bee. Good night, Fox, they call back sleepily. <coughs> snort, snort, Badger to Bunny and Bee. Shh, Badger, says Bunny. Good night, Badger, says Bee. Meow. Meow, cat, to bunny and bee. Good night, cat, says bunny. Time for sleep, says bee. It is quiet again and not a sound nearby. <gasps> the moon drifts lazily across the sky. Tweet, 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 sing the birds as the sun starts to rise. <gasps> Poor bunny and bee. Have such tired little eyes. Oh, look. I'm so sleepy, yawns Owl. Me too, yawns Fox. Me too, yawns Badger. Me too, yawns Cat. Me too, yawns Bunny. <gasps> Me too, yawns Bee. Shh. Because now. They're all asleep by the house in the tree. Oh, that's a lovely place for them to sleep, isn't it? If you build any tree houses and do lots of planting and loads of things, I'm sure you are, aren't you? Right, let's see, what is this one? A thrilling and humorous ice by sailing adventure. You, me and the big blue sea. And this one is by Marie Louise Fitzpatrick. So we've got them all out in the big ship, haven't we? Yeah, it's like a pirate ship. Oh, what are they? Are they the seagulls? Let's see. When you were a baby, we went to sea. That's mummy telling her little boy, isn't it? We went to sea. When you were a baby, we went to sea, didn't we? You and Alice and me, all three. And a big, big trunk. But you were only a baby. You wouldn't remember. We waved bye-bye, didn't we? Then we were away, just like that, without any bother. But you were only a baby. You wouldn't remember. Oh, somebody's fallen over there, aren't they? So off we sailed, didn't we? There was nothing to see but the sea, the big blue sea. But you were only a baby. You wouldn't remember. There's lots going on here, isn't there? Yes, there is. Oh, look. Then we heard a screeching sound, didn't we? But it was only a bird. A pretty bird up high in the sky. But you were only a baby. You wouldn't remember. Mm, let's see. Then there were lots of birdies, weren't there? We fed them bags of bread, bags and bags. You'd never think they could eat so much. 
Oh, but you were only a baby. You wouldn't remember. Hmm. Very interesting. Lots of big, huge waves there, isn't there? So we went for our afternoon nap, didn't we? Down to our cabins and up in our bunks. And there was nothing to see but the sea. But you were only a baby. You wouldn't remember. We sat at the captain's table for dinner, didn't we? It was very nice when we asked for jelly, but there wasn't any. Now that wasn't funny. Uh, but you were only a baby. You wouldn't remember. Look at all that's going on here. They're splish splashing about the place, aren't they? And there's food and drink on every place. We went on deck for a little fresh air, didn't we? The captain sailed such a ship-shaped ship. We knew we'd sleep snug that night, down in our cabin and up in our bunks. But you were only a baby. You wouldn't remember. Next morning we woke and there we were, weren't we? Aunt Alice couldn't wait to get on the pier. But we were sad to leave that ship, you and me, weren't we? But you were only a baby. You wouldn't remember. We were sad to leave, weren't we? Our feet were all wet, but that didn't matter. We were sad to leave that little ship. We went home on another one. Now, why was that? I don't remember. Do you? <gasps> but of course you don't. You are only a baby. Oh, but I think he does, doesn't he? He's got some lovely memories. That's a really nice story. And we'll all look forward to going back out to the seaside, won't we now? We'll be able to go and uh, make our sand castles and play in the sand and splash each other in the water. <gasps> What's this lovely one? I love the colours on this one. A beautiful hairy frog. And this is called Hungry Harry and it's by Joanne Partis. Oh, some lovely colours there. Hungry Harry. Harry Frog was feeling hungry. What's for dinner? He asked his mum. Well, I think you're old enough to look for your own, said Mommy Frog. Brilliant, cried Harry, and off he leaped across the lily pond. Till he came to some tall reeds. There's sure to be something tasty here, he said, mm, licking his lips. Sure enough, there was a delicious looking dragonfly. Harry was just about to jump when the dragonfly flew off into the air. You can't take me, she called. I'm much too quick for you. Harry was wondering what to do next when suddenly he saw a big juicy caterpillar on a twig above him. Goody, goody, dinner at last, he cried. But when he flicked out his long tongue to catch it, the caterpillar laughed. You can't eat me, she said. My hairs would tickle your tongue. <laughs> Never mind, I'll find something soon, said Harry. He bounced on until he met a scrumptious looking snail crawling towards him. Oh, look at the snail. Yummy, yummy, said Harry. But when he reached it, the snail's head suddenly disappeared. You can't eat me, said the snail from inside his shell. I'm much too clever. Harry was getting hungrier and hungrier. He was just about to give up and go home to his mum when he spotted a Squirmy, wormy, wriggling along. Oh, now's my chance, cried Harry. But just as he was about to catch the worm in his big wide mouth, it slithered down into the wormhole. You can't eat me, shouted the worm. I'm too squiggly and squirmy. Harry felt very fed up. He would go home to his mum, but just as he turned to hop back, he saw something he'd never seen before. It didn't look too quick. It didn't look too tickly. 
It didn't look too clever and it didn't look too squiggly and squirmy. In fact, it looked absolutely delicious. And what was more, <gasps> there was enough for everyone. Oh, look, they had loads there, hadn't they? Oh, yes, they had. Oh, all the beautiful colours. No, oh, that was a lovely one. Hungry Harry. So, let's see what's next. Oh, I don't think anybody would say this now, would you? I hate school. No, no, no. Gian Willis and Tony Ross. Let's see what's happened in this one. There was a fine young lady and her name was Honor Brown. She didn't want to go to school. She hoped it would burn down. And when I asked the child why, her face had turned red. She threw her school hat on the floor and this is what she said. Oh dear. My teacher is a warty toad, my classroom is a hole. The dinner ladies feed us worms and rabbit poo and coal. Oh yuck. And I believed her every word, for why should honour lie? And cling to mother on the step, and stamp her feet and cry. Weren't the lessons lots of fun? And had the lesson learned to read? Oh no, she said, we don't do that. They beat us till we bleed. They throw us out the window. They make us walk on glass. They always cut your head off if we're talking in the class. No wonder what she made a fuss and didn't want to go. But surely she had lovely friends. Young Honor Brown cried, no. My friends are crooks and villains. They're pirates and they're bad. They're scary, spooky creatures. They're monsters. They're mad. They tied me to a rocket. They sent me into space. No wonder little Honor Brown had such a grumpy face. But what about the sandpit and the nice blue water tray? It would be fun, she said, if I could ever get to play. The sandpit is a smelly swamp. We sit in it and sink. The water tray has sharks in it. They're killer sharks, I think. Oh, look at all the shark fins. Oh, dear. Thank heavens for P.E., I said. You love to swing on rope. Not by my neck, I don't, she said. Until I'm dead, they hope. You like the school trip, surely. You had such a happy time. She said, I never did, you know. The coach was full of slime. A tiger ate our teacher and it dragged her to its foot. But far, far, far worse than that. The ice cream shop was shut. Poor Honor Brown, poor little lamb. They made her go each day. The first year was the worst, she said. She didn't want to stay. The teacher stood her on the roof, out in the snow and rain. And when she fell off frozen stiff, they sent her up again. Her second year was dreadful. On her sports day afternoon, a wicked witch pushed past her and her egg fell off its spoon. Oh! Last summer term, a monster came and scribbled on her work. Oh dear! And no one would believe her. The headmaster went berserk. Yes, Honor Brown just hated school for years and years and years. Yet on the day that she could leave, I found her full of tears. Oh, look. Whatever's wrong, I asked her. You no longer have to go. But Honor Brown just howled and sobbed. I'll miss it really, though. So it wasn't all that bad, was it? I think a lot of it was in her imagination. She was making up lots of stories, wasn't she, about it? I think so. Oh, let's see some beautiful colours in this one. And this is Old Hat. An old hat. Herbert had an old hat. And it's by Emily Gravett. And there's loads of hats in this, isn't there? Herbert had a hat. This is Herbert. 
His nana had knitted it for him when he was little. It was warm and cosy and kept his ears toasty. It was... Just are sticking them here, aren't they? Yeah. This is a hard one to read, isn't it? <gasps> it was an old hat. Oh, look at all the colours. Aren't they just beautiful? So what happened to the old hat? <gasps> so Harbert got a new hat. Oh, he wanted to go for a new one. Look at all these different hats and shapes and colours. The latest hat. It was fashionable. It was fresh and it was fun. Ooh, look at that. Loads of fruit in that one, isn't there? It was low in fat, high in fibre and could provide 80% of his daily vitamins. It was the latest, most up to date hat there was. Until it wasn't. <laughs> Old hat. Is what it was saying. So Harper got a, a new, new hat. This hat really was the latest thing. It came with a state-of-the-art flashing light and it was highly visible to oncoming traffic. But when Harbert put on his hat and went outside, everyone went, ha, ha, oh, old hat. Why are you saying that? Harbert was determined to have the latest hat. He bought Top Hat magazine. Ooh, look at him, it's all those ones in there. And was the first in line in the hat shop on hat unveiling day. But whatever Tarber tried, old hat, old hat, old hat. <gasps> They're all saying this to him. They've all got different ones, haven't they? Harbert had had enough. So one day he did something no one ever done before. Oh, look at all the pile of hats. He's got a cardboard box on his head there, hasn't he? Oh, what did he do? He took off his hat and look at their faces. Look at his beautiful hair. Look at this. His feathers. Aren't they fabulous? And all the colours. So he really had a beautiful one all along, hadn't he? And now look what's happening. They all want to have hats like them. They're making them up with potatoes and they're sticking them on with tape. They all want to have a hat like his, don't they? So you see, we all have beautiful parts, don't we? Yes, we do. Now, we're coming to our last book for today. And this is The Secret Garden. I love this book. Beautiful colours. And look at the girl looking into the garden and the little robin. And this book is illustrated by Alan Marks and it's retold by Susanna Davison but based on Frances Hodgkin Burnett's story. The last time Mary Lennox saw her parents was in the garden outside their house in India. That night a terrible fever swept through the house and Mary's mother and father both died. Mary felt as if she were all alone in the world. Then a letter arrived from her uncle, Mr. Craven, inviting her to England to stay. Mistletwake Manor, Yorkshire, England. Dear Mary, I have made arrangements for you to come to England and live in Mistlethwaite Manor. My housekeeper will meet you in London and escort you there. I'm afraid I won't see you for some time, as I have to travel to Europe on business. Yours sincerely, Archibald Craven. I don't like it here, thought Mary, as she crossed the wild, wind-swept moors. She's out in the moors in Yorkshire, isn't she? She arrived at the house late that night. Her uncle was away, and the housekeeper said had left her alone in a, in a shadowy room. Outside, the wind howled like a lonely person. In the morning, Mary wandered out of the house into a wintry garden where an old man was digging. What's behind that wall, she asked. Ah, said the gardener, that's the secret garden. Mr Craven shut it up when his wife died. Then he buried the key and went away. Ah, as he spoke, a robin fluttered up and perched nearby. 
He cocked his head and looked at Mary. Will you be friends with me? she whispered. You sound just like our Dickens, said the gardener. He talks to all wild things. Now run along, Missy, I've got work to do. Mary watched the robin fly off and decided to follow him. Show me the key to the garden, she begged. The robin swooped down and hopped around on the ground. He is trying to tell me something, thought Mary. She scrabbled in the soil and found a rusty key. Mary searched and searched for the door in the garden. Then, one day when the wind came in a sweet-scented gust from the moor, she found it. She's found the door, hasn't she? wonder what's behind it. She put the key in the lock and the door creaked slowly open. Mary was inside the secret garden. It was a magical, mysterious place. A hazy tangle of rose branches and spiky green shoots thrust up through the wintry ground. Mary spent all morning in the garden and tranced. The shoots looked so crowded, she cleared spaces around them. The robin chirped as though pleased to see someone was gardening here at last. Outside, she saw a boy with a fawn by his side. Are you Dickon? she said shyly. He nodded. Can you keep a secret? Mary asked. I keep secrets all the time, Dickon replied. Secrets about the cubs and the birds and the nests. Ah, I can keep a secret. Come with me, whispered Mary, and led him to the secret garden. Dickon looked around as if he was in a dream. I never thought I'd see this place, he murmured. Help me make it come alive, said Mary. Yes, he whispered. We make it the prettiest garden in England. The winter passed into spring, and one blustery night, Mary couldn't sleep. She was woken by a cry that pierced the wind. She followed it down dark passages until she reached a door with the glimmer of light beneath. Inside the room was a vast carved bed with a boy in the middle of it, sobbing. Are you a ghost? whispered Mary. No, snapped. I'm Colin Craven. Mr. Craven's my uncle, said Mary. Are we cousins? Why did no one tell me about you? I'm not well, Colin replied. My mother died and I was born and my father can't bear to look at me. Just like the secret garden, said Mary. And she told him all about it. The sun and the rain and the buds bursting into flower. And Colin closed his eyes and dreamed of a garden coming alive. Mary raced to Colin's room the next morning. I brought a friend to meet you, she said. Will you take me to the garden? asked Colin. They rushed around the paths and Mary flung back the ivy and opened the garden door. Sunlight lit up the sprays of flowers and the air was alive with birdsong. I can feel things growing, gasped Colin. You can work with us in the garden, said Mary. Colin's pale face grew rosy in the sunlight. And maybe I'll get well, he whispered. Oh, it's sticking again, isn't it? Uh, every day they played and worked in the garden. And every day Colin grew stronger. If only my father could see me, thought Colin. And he began to wish. Come home, come home. One night, Colin's father, far away in Italy, had a strange dream. He heard his dead wife calling his name. Where are you? he pleaded. In the garden, came the reply. Mr Craven returned home at once. He rushed to the garden. As he came down the path, he heard children laughing behind the wall. How can that be, he thought. The garden must be dead. I buried the key. At that moment, Colin and Mary burst out of the garden door. Colin, gasped his father. Is that really you? I'm better, father. I'm well at last. It was Mary and the garden. 
the garden, he murmured, just like my dream. It's a magical garden, said Mary. Come inside and see. So that was what happened. The garden and all the flowers and all the beautiful sunlight helped to make him well again, didn't it? What a beautiful story. Beautiful illustrations as well. But now, I hope you enjoyed story time for Crinan and Og and join in all day. Today, Saturday, all day is going to be different events coming on. And remember, you can still get all your books at the library online if you need some. Okay, take care and remember, washy washy, happy happy. Bye.